everyone, Dennis Foley with Acoustic Fields. Today we're going to talk about head and heart. I think there's a tug of war that sometimes goes on uh, with both of these organs, so to speak, in, in our listening uh, music experience. So our heads really buy the gear, don't they? You know, we're looking at specs, cost, speaker size, room size, usage. We're using, you know, connectivity. We're using a lot of technical processing, so to speak, to come up with a decision. And then we research all that stuff, make decisions based on numbers, cost, performance, watts, you know, all the variables that we have to go through. And we're going through this process to really create an emotional experience. And that's using our hearts, right? So it's important that we have our heads on straight if we're going to get to the end result, which is the musical connectivity to our music the emotional connectivity to our music. I just thought of something that if you really wanted to define emotional connectivity, you would say it's the first four orders of harmonics. If you can hear the first four orders of harmonics in your room on any system you're playing, you'll definitely get that connection. Just one or two orders, probably not, but that's why it's so important to, you know, have a high resolution room because the emotional content of the music is in the harmonics. You can't hear the harmonics in a low resolution room. You just can't. I've been doing this a long time. And the hunger for the, the need to feel and hear, hear more and then consequently feel more emotion has been my quest to achieve this resolution with our technologies. So... Where does the head fit in in the, in the process? I think we've touched that before. Select the room footprint. That is a classic first tactic error people make. Now, there's two reasons for that. One, this is an existing room, and that's all they have to work with. Two, they've read about a certain dimension, or you, they've used the golden ratios, and they've constructed this room and they've used double wall and green glue and drywall and all of that stuff. And none of those tactics fit the usage of the room or contribute to the resolution of the room. So those are bad tactics for resolution. We've come so much farther in our barrier technologies than to give up nine inches of space for frequencies above 125. It's a little bit ridiculous in terms of physics. So footprint's critical. We want to select a width, height, and the length with no coincidentals. Coincidentals are modes that are really close to each other, less than five hertz. When that happens, they actually get louder than axial modes. So if you have coincidentals spread throughout the room, you know, let's say you have one at 40, one at 80, Another one up here at 120, you know, 123. So you get this double impact. Well, they get really loud. They get louder than axial mode. So the first thing, when we're looking for that proper footprint, we're looking for also a footprint that has no coincidentals. They can be treated, but look, the goal is to put less treatment in the room, not more. The goal is to get rid of the room completely. We should be outside in a quiet place. A meadow, so to speak. Pine needle forest was one we used to use in college. So that's the ideal. Ceiling height, the other critical factor. The ceiling height is the shortest of the three dimensions in a room, 98% of the time. And it creates a lot of problems because of its distance. Seven is horrible. Eight is not much better. Nine, 10% better. 11, maybe another 10% better. 12, another 5, 8% better. But 13, you know, then you start seeing 15, 20% jumps. 14, 30% jumps. 15, 40% jumps. So it's the 13 to 15 hertz uh, or feet that's ideal for ceilings. I know it's high, but that's what you have to have. Not me, it's our laws of physics. So I have 15 foot ceilings here in my studio. I still have 80 cycle issues. Okay, they can be treated. I just haven't had the time. Choose ratios that mathematically get along. That's the key. 
you have three variables. You have width, height, and length. And you got to think in terms of physics. You got to think in terms of taking that physics, the laws of physics, and translating that to those three numbers. Three numbers, so three variables, and they all have to get along. And there's just certain combinations of numbers. It doesn't matter where they are in those three. It could be ceiling height and width. It could be width and length. It could be length and ceiling height. It doesn't matter. You got to get those numbers mathematically compatible so that we don't have coincidentals and we, we widen the spaces between modes. Ro all rooms have modes, but when the space between the mode, let's say we got a 40 and an 80 hertz mode, the space, be if it's a 40 hertz spread, that's treatable. If it's 10 hertz, it's treatable, but may not be able to get it all or enough of it to achieve, you know, 70, 80 or 90 percent resolution. So you got to be careful. You got to start with a good footprint. You got to start with a good usage. Use your head to benefit your heart. Get your head working on the stuff that you need for your room. If it's an existing room, send in the room form. It's on our website. Go to the home page, room form. Top left corner, fill out all the information, attach pictures so I can see the surface areas. Stand in the middle of the room, take a picture of the front wall, both side walls, rear wall and ceiling. Not difficult, we just have to see what surface areas we have to work with. I need to see those photos. The dimensions tell me the problems, but the photos tell me the solution. How much space I have to treat the problem, because I know what we have to do to treat it, and it's mainly space. If it's a mid and high frequency problem, it's six inches of wall hanging material. If it's a low frequency problem, it's 12 to 16. And we need good coverage on all surfaces because your room was not designed to be a music room. It's usually a room in a house that's probably designed to be something else and you're turning into a music room. Okay, well, we got to make it more frequency response friendly because it was never designed based on its dimensions to be a music room. So head and heart, let's use both and use tactics towards a strategy. And then we'll get that ability to sit in that chair, take a deep breath and press the play button. Hope this helps. Thank you. Thank you for watching this video. And if you liked it, please give us a thumbs up. We also have a newsletter that you can subscribe to. So please do that because we offer special price discounts to only those on our newsletter. And then don't forget about our forum. We have started a forum on our own website where people ask questions and I usually get a chance every couple of days to look at it. There's an interchange between people on the forum and we'll give you real answers uh, on a regular basis. So that'll help you. Thank you.